Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our reflections in preparation for the descent of the Holy Spirit at the Feast of the Pentecost. We spoke about different impediments that would put the barrier, the wall, against us and the working of God through the Holy Spirit. Now, we're getting ready for the actual vigil celebration, for the feast day. First thing that I would like to encourage us is to wait, to place ourselves in a patient attitude of awaiting, being vigilant. When we are invoking the Holy Spirit, crying out, come Lord Jesus, over and over again, let's wait for his coming. He will not delay. He will come at the time and the moment that he considers most fit, most opportune for us. And therefore, we need to ask for this docility. Who knows? Maybe the questions that you are having and uh, a desire for the spirit that you are cherishing will be given to you as an answer that will come from the person you least expect. You might be having doubts about, let's say, your faith, your decisions, your relationships, and you're crying out, asking for the Holy Spirit to come and enlighten you. And God can use a person next to you or even the least expected person or a circumstance to give you a message. The word that will be given to you now will be sealed with the Holy Spirit in your heart. Therefore, the first attitude is to have a patient awaiting the disposition of the vigilant spirit. When we are saying, come Lord Jesus, let us stay awake. Also, it has to do not to get distracted with the worldly things, with the online uh, activities, with the TV shows. Let's stay in silence. How often Pope Francis and other spiritual writers repeatedly remind us, be in silence. We are so distracted by many noises, lots of different information coming to us from all sorts of sides, and we are confused. Don't you think that oftentimes you receive a message or a news and you get sad, you get anxious, you get uneasy, you get judgmental, you get frustrated. I don't know what state of soul you find yourself when different news may arrive to you. Okay, let the spirit work in our silent hearts. Let us create, to the degree that we can, a silent disposition, which means crying out to the Lord, not allowing the worldliness to distract us, despite of many activities and duties of the day that we have. The next element in waiting for the celebration is to have a clarity where we would like the Spirit to work in our lives. Do you know the area of your personal life, your anxieties, your uncertainties, the inclination to different sins, resentments and judgments, and weak areas of your life that you would like to let the Spirit in. It is very important to have it clear. We invite the Holy Spirit and then we are opening all the doors. But you need to ask very specifically. For example, Lord, send the Holy Spirit. I'm struggling in this situation in my marriage, in my relationship with my kids. I don't know how to act when it comes to the confrontation with that person, my coworker. How about a decision about, let's say, uh, changing a place, moving, or having a different view on some situations? I don't know. We were supposed to prepare ourselves now asking, I would say, a divine surgeon to operate 
in a specific area of our lives. Most probably, many of us are struggling with some kind of issues and problems, maybe wounds caused by conflict, abuses, uh, sufferings, traumatic experiences, struggling with those things. Now, let us invoke the Holy Spirit to come in those areas. He will be working in a very unexpected way. As we hear from the Lord who says that the Spirit blows as He wills. We don't know where He's coming from or where He's going, where He's taking us. And so, when we are crying out to the Lord, let us present our specific need, surrendering to Him, placing in His hands our struggles, our needs, asking for His healing grace. As the Lord is working in our lives, we need the intercession of the saints. Do you have those saints who, according to you, were truly open to the Spirit and the manifestation of God's greatness and power was so clear? Ask those saints to accompany you, to pray for you, to receive the Holy Spirit and be open to where God will take you. Which means, when we are telling him, come Lord Jesus, if he arrives to knock down some false illusions, some uh, idols we created, and we would say, how come you're doing this in my life? But he needs to destroy the old order to build something new. The old has passed. The new is coming. The working of the Holy Spirit is very gentle. It's not destructive as we think, but to bring healing, sometimes it is to also create an incision and it hurts, but always for our greater good. Let us also invoke the Blessed Virgin Mary to help us in the preparation for the descent of the Spirit. I still remember one of the homilies of Cardinal Cantalamessa, who interpreting the descent of the Holy Spirit said that the Blessed Mother, who was waiting along with the Apostles, interceding for them to be able to welcome the Spirit, when the promise of God the Father descended and came down, she would say, now, you, the apostles, know what I experienced when I was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit, when I received God Himself in me. Now you know. She was the one, as if, ushering this experience of the new birth, the birth to the new life, the divine life. Let us ask the Blessed Mother to accompany us in this time of the reception of the Holy Spirit to the degree that we are able to welcome and also ask God wants to pour those specific gifts during this feast of the Pentecost. And then beyond, let us keep invoking the Spirit, continuously crying out, come Holy Spirit, through the following days weeks and beyond, invoking the Holy Spirit in the small decisions, in the big decisions, in our relationship with other people, in the battles we are waging every single day. Come Holy Spirit, come to my life. Without you, I'm so weak and powerless and fragile. And in preparation, I would like to offer you this opportunity also of uh, finding a prayer to the Holy Spirit that you would be able to pray every day, if possible, or frequently, making it yours, invoking the grace of the Holy Spirit, asking for His presence. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, strengthen me, console me, tell me what I should do, 
Give me your orders. I promise to submit myself to all that you desire of me and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Let me only know your will. Amen.